You must be wondering, like, how do you become a CRNA without any experience? Well, in this video, I'm going to talk all about that. So definitely keep watching. My name is Christine and welcome to a new video. Thank you so much for being here today. And I'm excited to give you some information and content about, you know, how do you become a CRNA without any experience at all, um, starting from scratch. So if you're new here, um, I'm Christine and I'm currently an experienced CRNA. I've been a CRNA for many years and I have a passion to educate, guide, motivate. Um, so you can become a CRNA just like me if you're really interested. So in my channel, you'll hear a lot of knowledge, a lot of information and as much information as possible to help you make the best decision that's best for you. So let's get into this video now. So um, if you want to learn about, hey, you know, CRNA, what is that? So a CRNA is a nurse who has gotten um, um, a graduate degree, an advanced practice degree in nursing to become a CRNA. So basically you practice anesthesia. It can be in many different areas. It can be an outpatient, inpatient. Um, there's all different settings that you can become a CRNA. You know, there are CRNAs who work in um, OB, who place epidurals for women who are in pain and labor. You know, there are CRNAs who are in the operating room um, providing anesthesia for, to patients who are having surgery. Um, they are so many different types of areas in anesthesia, which is amazing. Um, a lot of variety, you know, from pediatrics up to geriatric populations. So it's a lot of variety in that sense, and it's an amazing area to go into. Are you, if you're interested in, you know, anesthesia and providing pain management um, to a variety of patients, just to get that started, so you kind of know a little bit about, you know, what you're going to go into. So a CRNA, you know, a lot of times when you get started, so same for example, I'm brand new and um, you're like, you know what, I made the decision today, mm, I want to become a CRNA. I don't know what to do, I don't know where I, how I should start. First thing to start is to do your homework, do your research. I have a ton of videos on my channel that can help guide you and give you a lot of knowledge and information on how to become a CRNA. So one of the first steps when you're thinking about becoming a CRNA is you need to think about going to school to become a registered nurse. So there's two options. So the first option is to become a registered nurse with an associate's degree, which is about a two year degree, 18 months to two years, depending on the program, as well as a bachelor's prepared nurse, where it's a four year degree in most cases. Now, there's a rare occasion, so if saying, for example, you have another bachelor's degree, saying it's a communication, or it's an art, or it's in, um, you know, religion, or something different, you can go ahead, get prerequisite courses. So some of, some of the courses prerequisites to become a registered nurse are at chemistry, biology, statistics, and a lot more. And you get all of these prerequisite courses depending on the school you're thinking of applying to. Because many registered nurse schools, uh, if it's associates versus um, bachelors, they require certain courses to um, apply for the program. So you're going to go ahead and get those specific courses done and then apply to the program. Now, like I said before, you can be you know, and then have another bachelor's degree in another area and um, apply for something called an accelerated um, bachelor's of nursing degree, where it's a lot of times like 18 months to, to two years to become a registered nurse if you had another degree. Now, if you are starting from scratch, say you're in high school and you're graduating and you're like, you know, I want to become a CRNA, where do I start? You can start with either an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree. But in my opinion, with a lot of experience and of definitely seeing um, with a lot of coworkers and people in the, in the area of nursing, I definitely recommend if you can, try to apply for a program that is bachelor's um, prepared. But sometimes it's difficult depending on your location, you may not have that option. So if in that case, second option would be get an associate's degree. Even if you get an associate's degree in nursing, um, you still have to work your way up to get a bachelor's degree in nursing. 
So that's your goal. You need to get that as a minimum requirement to become a CRNA, meaning you have to, in order to apply for a CRNA program, okay? Now there's kind of two ways of thinking about it when you're thinking about, you know, registered nurse associates versus bachelors. There's actually benefits to both of them. Even though I may recommend you going to get your bachelor's degree, there are some benefits to becoming a registered nurse um, with an associate's degree. So let me give you some examples. So say for example, you want to get your you want to become a registered nurse, and you know the only option is to become an associate's prepared. That's fine. If that's your only option, you do it because you know your NL goal is to be, to get a bachelor's degree after that. So if you do have to go into that schooling, it's fine. It takes two years. The benefit is as you if you graduate with your um, nursing degree as an associate's prepared nurse, registered nurse, you can start working as an ICU nurse. There are some hospitals that accept associate pair. Um, registered nurses to work in the ICU. You could start working in the ICU, getting experience as well as saving money, and then right away apply for a bachelor's prepared um, bridge program where you can start taking classes to get your bachelor's degree, even though you're a registered nurse, okay? And you're working in the ICU. So now you're getting some experience, which is awesome. And you're working towards your degree to get your bachelor's degree. Also, the nice thing is, now the nice thing about that is that you can start getting experience in an intensive care unit. There's different areas, there's medical, there's critical care, there's cardiovascular, there's neuro, there's all different areas of ICU nursing that you can go into. Now, of course, some programs or some hospitals, for example, when you're a graduate registered nurse, a lot of times they don't accept you to go into, you know, the ICU right away. You may need a, a minimum of one year of medical surgical experience or in another area, for example, right? But if you can do your research, um, look for a, um, a, a, res a nurse residency program where they accept graduate, graduate prepared nurses to go ahead to get accepted into the ICU right out of school. I do recommend it. I know it can seem like, wow, that's intense. It's a hard transition, especially just graduating. But I did it, for example, and I'll get a little bit into that soon. So now we talked about the associate's period nursing and what are some benefits to that. But, you know, sometimes that could be a longer road to become a CRNA, okay? But if you do have an opportunity to get accepted into a registered nurse program, a bachelor's degree, for example, that would be amazing. So you get your four years, three to four year um, degree finished and completed, and you go, if you can find a nurse residency program, go right into it, start getting, to, start getting your experience as a registered nurse as soon as possible in the ICU because the more experience in the ICU you have definitely increases your chance of getting accepted into a CRNA program. That's not the only thing, but that's one of the things, the criteria that they look at when they look at, you know, your application. So if you have to do medical surgical experience before and then go into ICU, that's fine. But if you do have to go into another unit like medical surgical unit, um, for a year, for example, as soon as you're six months of being in that unit, try to start looking for positions to get into the ICU, you know, reach out to nurse managers in the ICU, you know, show that you're interested, you're serious, um, and just start getting your research done. So you kind of get your head, your basically get yourself prepared and then get your research done. So you kind of prepared and you're on the, the, the right plane. Also, you can start thinking about critical care certification. That's another requirement for a lot of the programs um, for CRNA school. So definitely think about those steps so you can start lining everything up into a nice line and plane for yourself. So now you become a registered nurse and you have your bachelor's degree, for example, right? Um, but another thing, an accelerated program, like I said before, how you can become a, um, you have another degree, for example, a communications degree, you um, take your courses, your prerequisite courses, to get accepted into a nursing program. And you go to the nursing program. And um, it's an accelerated program, 18 months to two years, depending on the program. It's intense, it's rigorous, but you know what? It's worth it. It's a short program um, to get that bachelor's degree. 
that is another option. So definitely think about that if you're in another field. You don't have to start from scratch. You can go ahead and apply for that specific program. So now you are a registered nurse, right? We got, we got, got to that point, right? So now you're a registered nurse and um, you're thinking about, all right, now I need to get my ICU experience. So we talked about getting to the medical surgical unit for one year, but if you can, try to get into a nurse residency program as soon as possible. As soon as possible. And um, a lot of times they accept graduate, you know, graduate nurses into the program. And it's about a year where they help you transition into the um, ICU, you know, maybe three months on, you know, day shift where you're transitioning with a preceptor. And also you have didactics and classes and you also have a team of other nurses in the graduate, you know, program, the residency program, different specific specialties. Um, that go along with you and you're a cohort together and you work together, you know, to go ahead and get, you know, your first year as a resident, you know, in, um, you know, ICU nursing. A lot of times they have residency in, in labor and delivery, whole different, all different areas. Now, the nice thing is, is a lot of times these opportunities are open to you when it's at a teaching institution, like a big hospital. Like for example, for me, I went to um, NY I worked at NYU Medical Center Langone in um, New York City, and they had a nurse residency program for graduate nurses. So, you know, that was a great opportunity for me. I I had the experience, for example, who went straight, you know, of being a nurse and going into the ICU. Now, it was a difficult road. It was definitely rocky. I definitely have some videos on that, but it was all worth it in the end because I know my end goal was to become an advanced practice nurse. Now, just me to pause for a second and tell you that you can do it. You can definitely do it. You know, I'm happy that you're here today watching this video, trying to get as much knowledge and information because you're serious. You're listening to this video because you have a purpose and you have a plan. And I'm here to motivate you. I'm here to, you know, guide you, be your mentor on YouTube and help you through this you know, it's an exciting journey that you're going to go into. So if you um, want to continue learning more information, definitely subscribe and hit the bell. And so you don't miss anything as well as like the button, press the like button if you think this content is valuable to you. So I know that this is a good, you know, good content to continue on. So now you're in ICU. I definitely recommend when you are in an ICU, you get a minimum of one year of experience before you think about going you know, into CRNA school, for example. Um, a lot of programs, they require one year. Um, some pro programs require, you know, five years. Every program is so different. And even though a program may say one year of experience, a lot of times they accept students who have a couple more years of experience. However, there are rare occasions where I have a friend of mine, um, he went ahead and he knew, like before he even went into nursing, he had a degree in another field, and he went ahead and got his accelerated BSN, um, where he became an, a registered nurse, and his goal was to become a CRNA. So then he made everything and as planned out, and he had everything organized how he was going to become a CRNA as fast as possible. Became a registered nurse, you know, and then that was probably a year program, year and a half, a two year program. Then he worked in ICU for one year, applied to a CRNA program got accepted into multiple programs and went to school to become a CRNA and is currently a CRNA. So it can definitely be done um, fast. So definitely think about that if you really want to become a CRNA. Um, there are many options. This doesn't have to be a very long, rigorous um, time period. It all depends on you and how hardworking you are and what you really are passionate about and how you're going to go ahead and plan your, your goals in life. You know, but don't be concerned, you know, don't be worried and say, oh, you know, I've been an ICU nurse for five years and, you know, should I still think about becoming a CRNA? Of course, you know, of course you can. You can do anything. You know, sometimes you have things in life that throw you into a certain direction and then you just turn around and you just go into a certain plane and you become it. For example, for me, you know, I was in the ICU for about six months. And the nice thing about NYU Medical Center, they gave me an opportunity where I could go to school at NYU to get my master's degree. And specifically at that, those, 
that the College of Nursing for at NYU, um, it was um, nurse practitioner degrees, you know, education and administration. And so I said to myself, I'm going to become a, an acute care nurse practitioner. I just knew I wanted to go back to school and become an advanced practice nurse. And for me, I just love learning and growing. So that was always my plan. I go to, you know, work in the ICU and start taking classes to advance my degree. And so I did that. And I thought I was going to be a acute care nurse practitioner. But long and behold, I never shadowed a CR. I mean, I never shadowed an acute care nurse practitioner. I really didn't know what I was really going into. I just knew that I loved the hospital setting. I know I love the elderly population. And I just knew I loved being in a hospital. I don't know. I just loved the hospital. I love the ICU. I just love the hospital. And I thought to myself that if I become a acute care nurse practitioner, maybe I could become a nurse practitioner in the ICU, which I, which I love, and, or maybe something in a hospital. And when I actually saw some of the, nurse, uh, the acute care nurse practitioners at my hospital, and I kind of observed for myself, you know, as an ICU nurse, I came to realize maybe this was, was not a fit for me. It just didn't, it was a gut feeling. It just wasn't for me. There was nothing wrong with the degree, nothing wrong with, the, uh, with being a nurse practitioner. It just didn't feel like a fit for me. So I said to myself, what am I going to do? I got a shadow. You know, if I'm going to leave my program, I need a shadow. So I've heard about CRNAs, um, of course, on my unit, like a lot of nurses go into the ICU, you know, to go to become a CRNA. But I never really knew about it. I never desired it because I really didn't know. So I said to myself, let me just shadow. Let me just see what this is all about. You know, it's like everyone wants to do it. So let me just go ahead and do it. So I went ahead, shadowed in the OR. And I shadowed a couple of CRNAs. It wasn't just one time, it was a couple times. And I was like, oh my God, this is so amazing. You know, I, I, I really loved it. I loved area management. You know, I love how independent, you know, the CRNAs were. I loved, you know, a lot of the, you know, the, the anesthesia machine. It was so intriguing to me, the ventilator, the anesthesia gases. And I also just loved and desired pain management. There was something about it that was just so intuitive. And it reminded me a little bit of the ICU, kind of like, kind of a little bit of titrating things. Like, I just really like that. And so I said to myself, hmm, this seems like a really nice fit. And so I said, you know, let me just... I shouted once and I liked it, but sometimes you need to shout a couple times to make sure, you know, it's the right decision. So I shouted a couple more times and I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. This is a fit for me. So I ended up, you know, pausing my program at NYU, the Q care nurse practitioner degree and went ahead and applied to a CRNA program. So for me, for example, it was, I was an ICU nurse for about five, four to five years, maybe four years before I got accepted into a CRNA program. But my journey was different. You know, my journey was to be care, become a acute care nurse practitioner. Then of course my path shifted to become a CRNA. So everyone's so different and unique. And you know, just be confident and it's okay. You know, and um, if you say to yourself, you're a nice you nurse now and you know you wanna become a CRNA, just do it. Don't fear it. You can do it. If you really have the mindset and you're really focused and you really want to do it, you could do anything. You know, they say sometimes, are you smart enough to become a CRNA? No, it depends on how you are, you know, as an individual. I'm here to say that you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. And of course, I'm a different person, but it's all about having, you know, passion, you know, really doing your research, really knowing for sure that this is what your plan is going to be. You know, and it's going to be a rough road. It's not going to come easy. But if you're willing to work hard, you can do anything. So my road is five years. So let me get back on the track. I kind of went on a tangent. I'm sorry, guys. So now you got your years of experience. That's the next step. After the ICU, you need a certain amount of years of experience in the ICU, right? So you get those years of experience. And then during those years of experience, if it's one year, five years, 10 years, Everyone's different, right? Um, you want to start thinking about when you're in the ICU, what's your plan, you know? So you want to make sure, of course, when you're, you're nursing, you know, you're nursing, of course, you want to get good grades. It's the best grades you can get, especially on your, like, core science and math courses, right? And the same thing that goes in when you're in the ICU. 
you want to also get very good experience, well-rounded experience, um, as well as, you know, be involved on your unit. So you want to be involved. You want to be maybe part of like quality improvement measures, committees, maybe get involved in research if you can. That's always great. And it always looks great on your resume as well as volunteer work, maybe in your community. That's always great. Uh, that, those, that's just always a win-win situation. Also, if, for example, when you were a nurse, when you were going through your nursing degree and you didn't get such great, great grades, right? And things have changed and you said, you know what? I'm taking this serious. Just take some courses over if you have to. So take those courses that you may not have done as well and retake the courses and try to get better grades. So it strengthens your application. Okay. Now also think about it when you're in the ICU, you know, you want to start thinking about, you know, uh, recommendations, you know, Maybe the intensivist on your unit, one of the, the head doctors, you know, your nurse manager, maybe someone in administration, even, you know, a coworker. You want to start thinking about those type of things when you're in the ICU. You want to get your certification in critical care. You want to start working upon that. That definitely helps you so, so much to get that critical care certification. It helps you be a better nurse. It helps you to strengthen your ICU experience as well as allows you when you do have your interview, when you say, for example, you know, you put your application out there and they're having an interview, you know, some of the interviews can be very intense with a lot of like question you about a lot of information in the ICU. While sometimes, depending, what I actually recently learned is that a lot of the programs are transitioned a little bit too, where they want to know about you and see if you're a fit for the program and how hardworking you are, what experience you, what experience you have, and how you know you, your research might be for the program if you're thinking about doctoral degree now. So that's why research is so important when you are in the ICU. It's essential. It's the bare bones. You need that. And I know you may say, oh, I don't like research. I can understand that, but research is so important, especially when you're thinking about your master's as well as you're thinking about your doctoral degree. So for me, I had a master's degree. So while a lot of the programs nowadays are transitioning by 2025 to be a doctoral degree. So research, research, research. So definitely think about that. So a lot of the programs, when they do interview you, you know, think about those things, you know, just about your application and like, you know, and whatever's on your application, you have to know in and out, up and down, because they're going to ask you a lot of personal questions, a lot of medical questions, um, a lot of social questions, you know, so those are some things to start thinking about when you are, you know, in the ICU and you get your certification in critical care and really knowing that book in and out and um, all that information, because it definitely helps you, especially when you're going into CRNA school, you know, in a program, you know, that stuff is just a bare bones basic, basics that you need. It definitely helps you in the program. So then, you know, you get your experience. I talk about all the different things I recommend that you do when you are, you know, in the ICU. Now you can think about your application. So I spoke to you about before, application is so important. So stick around towards the end of the video because I definitely have some tips and tricks on that, okay? So, you know, think about your application. Application, for example, you're going to need a letters of recommendation. You're going to need, you know, your certificate of critical care. And you need an essay. I definitely have videos on your essay on, you know, kind of some tips and tricks of how to guide you in writing your paper. You know, you're also going to... You're going to know about your resume, maybe a cover letter. You know, there's many things to think about when you're thinking about, you know, applying to a program. You know, when you're thinking about in a program, you know, do you want one locally? Do you want to go somewhere in another state? You know, there's a lot of benefits to both. So definitely take that into consideration. And I definitely recommend that when you do apply to a program, don't just apply to one or two. Apply to at least a good amount to keep your options open. And you may say, oh, I just want to be in my, in my specific area. And there's only one school I'm going to apply to. If you really want to become a CRNA, sometimes you've got to sacrifice, you know, and you may have to go to another state and go with your family or may, maybe independent. So it's a lot of programs where I've met a lot of colleagues. I've met a lot of students, for example, you know, and they've traveled you know, to another area. Maybe they're in Georgia and they went to school in South Carolina or maybe they're from North, you know, from, from California and they went to school in New York. I mean, it's happened. People do it. So it all depends on you. And then you get accepted into a program and yay, but it's not over yet. 
it is not over. Just because you get accepted into a program doesn't guarantee that you're going to graduate and become a CRNA. You got to work hard. A lot of the programs are very rigorous, you know, master's versus doctoral degree. It's about a one and a half year more or one year more for, doctor, for the doctoral degree, which is not that bad, you know, to, to do that. Um, so just think about that when you're thinking about applying to different schools. Keep your options open. And it's not that much longer. And then you have to go through the whole program, get your clinical experience, get all your you know, didactics done, and then you gotta take your certification exam in order to be certified, to become a C, you know, to become registered, to become, you know, to work actively as a CRNA. And then you take that certifica certification exam, woo! And then you apply to you know, different um, jobs, and there's so many jobs. Just like with, um, nursing, there's such a huge shortage, is the same exact thing when you think about, you know, CRNA um, shortage. So now looking at 2022, it is a booming industry. Like, oh my God, booming. You're this, one of the highest salaries in nursing and it's just even more than ever. And so thinking about when you graduate, this is the bonus right here. Think about when you graduate, you know, a lot of um, places, you know, a minimum of $125,000 a year, which is that is bare bones minimum, but that's not really how it is now. You're looking at, a, an, looking at it nationwide, about 180,000, approximately plus or minus, um, looking overall average of a graduate nurse. I mean, nurse, nurse anesthetist, right? Also, with more years of experience, it can be even higher, like even an, an average of $220,000 a year when you're looking at it off, you know, in a spectrum. Like for example, when you look at like metropolitan areas like California or New York, I'm just giving you an example. Those are the highest paid. So you're looking closer to like that amount of money. Now the highest paid in my opinion, which is awesome, is traveling or independent contractor or 1099. You know, some places they are paying, you know, CRNAs 200 to $210 an hour, you know, to travel to a facility, maybe work there for six months, maybe three months. It all depends. There's so many opportunities. There's such a shortage. You know, this growing population, you know, growing with surgeries, it's just constantly growing. So there's a need. And so to meet that need, they're willing to pay more money. And so if you think about $200 an hour, you're looking at over $300,000 a year, you know, being a CRNA, independent contractor or um, a traveler. So definitely take that into consideration. But just remember, money isn't everything. You don't want to spend time and money to go into a profession that is just not in tune with you and you're really not really into it. You want to go into a profession that you're going to be happy, but of course you want to have financial stability. So definitely think about those things when you're thinking about becoming a CRNA and even starting from scratch, you can do it. Literally, I've done it. Many people have done it. I had a newborn baby when I went to CRNA school. So if I can do it, you can do it. So definitely, if you want to learn more about CRNAs and how to grow your CRNA career, definitely click one of these videos over here and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.